What is communism? Everybody knows that communism exists. Most people are agreed that communism is undesirable. Uh, but very few people could define clearly and simply just what communism is. This is not really very surprising because communism is not simple. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I'll make the attempt at a definition, although by itself the definition won't mean very much. We could define communism as the term which embraces the doctrines, the organization, the methods and objectives of those people who call themselves communists. Uh, to understand this definition, we need to know what the doctrines of the communists are, what the organization of the communists is, what methods communists employ, and what objectives they seek to attain. Uh, it is the purpose of this series of lectures to try to clarify these things so that uh, we can get a, an understanding of the doctrines, methods, objectives and organizational structure of the communists as they operate throughout the world. Very little information concerning communism can be derived from the name communism itself. Actually, the choice of the name communism was a very happy choice for the communists uh, because there are a number of people who insist on uh, examining the root meaning of the word communism and thinking that this gives them an insight into communist doctrines, communist programs and the nature of the communist movement. Uh, for example, it's not unknown to find people who say communism. That means communism. That means having things in common. The early Christians, they had things in common, therefore the early Christians were the first communists. Actually, the name communism is no more significant uh, than the name given to any other complex movement. Uh, take, for example, uh, the name Dodge, which is given to the Dodge automobile, uh, you couldn't find out very much concerning the engineering of the Dodge through looking up the root meaning of the word Dodge. Uh, you wouldn't think the individual who said, uh, you know, I'm always in a hurry to get to work in the morning. I've got to dodge in and out of traffic quickly, therefore I bought a Dodge car. You wouldn't think that individual was very intelligent. And actually, it's not very intelligent to examine the historic meaning of the word communism and think that this gives an insight into the nature of the present world communist movement. The word communism is simply a name, like the word dodge is a name, and each of them indicates a very complex existing entity. And the people who can tell us what communism is are the people who are called communists. And there are a very considerable number of these throughout the world at the present time. A brief review of the progress of the world communist movement is uh, stimulating and somewhat frightening. A man called Lenin established a movement called Bolshevism with about 17 supporters in 1903. He conquered Russia with about 40,000 supporters in 1917. Today, the party of Lenin has conquered more than one billion of the people of the earth. This is success, statistical success, amazing success, greater success than any other movement in the history of mankind has achieved. However, all the people who are under the control of communists are not communists. Uh, decidedly, they are not communists. They indicate this by their readiness to flee, to escape from the control of the communists wherever there is the slightest possibility. So let's examine how many communists there are in the world today. 
the official figures were published by the communists in the World Marxist Review in August 1964. Uh, the World Marxist Review is the official magazine of international communism. Uh, as already indicated, Lenin conquered Russia with about 40,000 communists in 1917. In 1928, there were 46 communist parties in the world with a total membership of 1,680,000. In 1935, there were 61 communist parties in the world with a total membership of 3,141,000. In 1957, there were 75 communist parties in the world with a total membership of 33 million. In 1963, there were 90 communist parties in the world with a total membership of over 42.8 million. So the number of communists has grown from approximately 40,000 in 1917 to 43 million throughout the world today. And these 43 million communists uh, are in the countries which they control, such as Russia, China, uh, the Eastern European countries, Cuba, and also in the non-communist countries uh, where they have not yet come to power. But these 43 million communists today are in complete control of one billion of the Earth's population. This gives some idea of the magnitude of the communist danger. Now, these communists and their leaders are the people who are entitled to tell us what communism is. And every one of these communists claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. Uh, every one of them. Uh, every communist in Russia claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. Every communist in China claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. Every communist in Yugoslavia claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. Every communist in Cuba claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. And every communist in the United States claims to be a Marxist-Leninist. Whatever differences there may be between the communist parties of the world, they are all agreed that they are Marxist-Leninists and practitioners of what they call the science of Marxism-Leninism. So what is Marxism-Leninism? Uh, the people who are entitled to tell us what it is are Marx and Lenin. Uh, Marx was born in 1818, and he wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848, and he was followed by Lenin. And since Lenin is later than Marx, uh, it is the Lenin interpretation of Marx which is accepted by the Marxist-Leninists throughout the world. Uh, fortunately, Lenin was given to uh, definitions uh, with very few words. And Lenin defined Marxism as the class war plus the dictatorship of the proletariat. So the essential features of Marxism to Lenin and consequently to the Marxist-Leninists are the doctrines of class warfare and proletarian dictatorship. So the two essential elements common to communism the world over are the elements of class warfare and proletarian dictatorship. What do we mean by class warfare? To understand this, we need to go back to the basic doctrines of Marx. And Marx and the Marxists see the world as divided into two classes which are in fundamental conflict with each other. One class is the established class which controls the business activities of the community, uh, controls the productive forces, the tools of production. The name given to this class by Marx was the bourgeoisie. The other class to which Marx directed attention was the working class. 
the class that sold its labour for wages. The name given to this class by Marx was the proletariat. Uh, between these two classes, Marx allegedly discovered a state of permanent truceless warfare. And this class war, he declared, was the determinant, the dynamic of progress and society. Uh, from the point of view of Marx and the Marxists, they have not declared this war. They've simply recognized that it exists. And they believe that uh, this warfare inevitably will end with the overthrow of the control of society by the business classes and victory for the proletariat, which will result in the establishment of proletarian dictatorship. However, uh, the communists uh, believe that the Communist Party, which Lenin later organized, is the representative of the proletariat. It is the brains of the proletariat. Therefore, it has the responsibility of exercising dictatorship on behalf of the proletariat. So the essential doctrines of Marxism are class warfare and the dictatorship of the Communist Party. Uh, this is a long way from the doctrine of sharing, having things in common as it was expressed by the early Christians. Uh, often we've heard people say, at least I have, that communism sounds good in, in theory. The trouble is, it does not work in practice. Uh, I believe this is totally wrong. I believe communism sounds poor in theory. When you really understand the theory of communism, you know how it centralizes and glorifies the concept of war and dictatorship. Surely we don't regard war and dictatorship as good. Uh, however, as history has shown, it does work in practice to the extent that once the dictatorship of the Communist Party is, is established, it is the most efficient form of tyranny mankind has yet devised. Everyone who wishes to preserve freedom must repudiate communism in doctrine as well as in practice.